Welcome to K. Elizabeth Toasts, a podcast celebrating people who increase our quality of life. I'm your host, K. Elizabeth. Each episode is a heartfelt interview of a remarkable person making lives better. Give a listen if you are in need of a dopamine hint, or if you like toast, because this toasts for you. Let me give you a little bit of context about what we're going to talk about today. So the United States government and the World Health Organization has identified five different things that impact our health that are social. They're not related to our genetics. They're not related to our lifestyle choices. They're literally social determinants of our health. And they've identified five social and community context, economic stability, healthcare, education, and also our neighborhood or built environment. These five things, when combined together, can impact up to 60% of our health outcomes, which is pretty crazy if if you ask me. (laughs) It certainly uh, impresses me. So in this episode, Hannah I'm hoping you'll talk a little bit about your fat healing group in the context of social and community context. So how did that start? I uh, have been fat my whole life and that identity uh, has been important for the past few years. I think I have gone to a lot of therapy um, to get comfortable with that word and that identity and in that process um really sort of tapping into some younger parts of Hannah um learned that I needed to see fat people thriving I needed to be around fat people and not have the conversation be centered around weight loss or changing our bodies or shame feeling shame about our bodies and so just this idea kind of sparked of like I just need to like I need to physically surround myself with fat people. I got together some friends who also identify as fat or are, who are fat, but, you know, are exploring that identity. Um, And we meet once a month-ish. And really the, I should say the whole, um, it started with like wanting to reclaim food, right? Like I think People, people gather and create community around food a lot. And I think for fat people, that can be really triggering. I think there's a lot of uh, narrative or there's a lot of shame put on fat people when they eat around other humans of, am I eating too much? Do I look messy? Uh, can I take that third slice of pizza? What are people going to think? All of that. And I wanted to strip that away. And I wanted people, I wanted individuals to bring food to this fat healing group and have us celebrate that and talk about what that dish meant to them as a kid or whatnot. And then it's just sort of morphed into this really tight knit group of people There's about 10 of us. Um, and we get together and we talk about all kinds of stuff fat related. And we also just socialize, but it's really shown me the power of having people close to you where you can feel safe to be vulnerable and there is this power in having someone just like understand your life experience um who also shares the identity can i ask like how do you how do you go from like i need to be around fat people to hi i see you're fat do you want to come join my group like how did you how did you make that transition um honestly it I think I I had known people in my life who own that identity, probably more so than I did. And I just said, like, would you be interested in, like, hanging out once a month, uh, eating food? And then they said yes. And they're like, I actually have friends that could really, you know, benefit from this. And so it just kind of started that way. Hmm. <laughs> have there been any particular moments... Um as a part of this group that were really powerful for you or for someone else? I think one of the more impactful ones that I still think about to this day was it was the first time the group had met. And there was one individual in the group 
um, we were going around and just kind of like I was doing some intro questions, asking questions such as like, what does the word fat mean to you? What is your relationship to that word? How do you describe your body? And one of the stories that someone told when they were eight years old, I believe it was when they were eight, like younger, how their parent um, kind of forced it upon them to go to Weight Watchers. And I think like I had, I had very, I don't think I had, I had very similar experiences as a, as a, as a child and as a teenager having diet and movement exercise kind of like put on me. But to hear someone else say that and to watch their face, like you could feel the fear they had in bringing that up. You could see like the shame that that parent had maybe put on them and to have them be able to share that and to have the whole group be like, that was not okay. I think it was just like really impactful. And I think that really showed me that like this is really huge and important. You were surprised. It sounded like that it's been a year. Huge surprise. Like I thought, I thought that people were going to think I was silly. Like I, I love to talk about feelings and I love to create spaces to be vulnerable. And I know that's not easy for everybody. I was like, I'm just going to try this thing and see like how people respond. And it's grown. We, we started with like six of us, I think. And now it's up to 10. And I had to cap it at that because I very much want the space to be intimate. And I think part of building that community is to like have that vulnerability and that takes time and now like I'm having some members of the group say that you know they're telling their friends and their their fat friends and the you know people like I want to join that's so cool or talking about like how can we make this bigger and it just again I have taken some courses on facilitation (laughs) but I am by no means like an expert here I am I'm just really like, I want to create the space. So walk me through like the moment that you realized that this is something that you wanted to do. Create the fat healing group? Yeah. Oh man, there were probably lots of tears. Just like knowing that I needed that and that feeling of like, I feel alone in sort of like my stories and my experiences wanting people who have had similar experiences growing up I was craving that so I just was like I gotta find people I'm gonna send out some text messages and yeah Yeah, so that's so that's my real question like like you asked me via text it sounds like as opposed to in person how did that go like what did you say I want to bring fat people together and just have this like talk and they're like yes sign me up I'm hoping that you'll talk a little bit about, you just became a certified coach. I am a fitness coach at a local gym in Minneapolis. I was actually approached to be a coach. Um, I have been going to this gym for a while. I want to empower people living in larger bodies, people who identify as fat, all of that. Like I want to empower them and show them that uh, we can reclaim movement and we can have it be joyful. It doesn't need to be a, a form of punishment. Mm. It can be your body can do really amazing things. You can be like strong and you can be agile and you can be flexible, all these things. And like, let's celebrate that. So it sounds like the um, the gym that you were a part of already has like a pretty progressive view um, of movement. Um do you have any classes? Do you have any clients? Like, what is that like? So, yeah, I don't do personal training. Um, I do. I just co- coach group fitness. But yeah, so we the gym that I go to, it's very queer friendly, very trans friendly. And so their big thing is trying to create a space where people who may have been rejected or not welcome in typical fitness spaces, like they can come there and they can move their body in the way that they want. There's still lots of education that has to be done. And that's what I'm really excited about is helping people like teach people how to coach a fat body, how to, you know, when we lift a bar from the ground overhead, talking like just normalizing like you're going to hit your stomach Um, or when you're running like you're going to jiggle. And like when you're doing certain movements, you're going to have to like 
turn your neck in a way where, you know, you can see like all the fat on your neck and just sort of like normalizing that. So I'm curious, um, have you heard any feedback from anyone who's taken these classes? I have. Um, the amount of people that I have heard say, I have never been excited to go to the gym ever. Or the amount of people that I hear say like, I'm like, I'm really proud of my body and what it did today. Like I lifted yeah. heavy weight or I, I did the jump rope. Like I did, you know, I think just people being in awe of themselves and being proud of themselves and also like wanting more, like wanting to see what else they can do. Yeah. Being able to watch that from a coaching perspective is, is beautiful. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So another thing you're doing to create community is is a fat storytelling event. Um, this is like my pride and joy. Um, I, similar to you, I love me some good storytelling. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's so good. And it's so important. And I think undervalued. I know in a lot of like other cultures, it's like a huge part of of the way of life and I think um at least in more like white midwestern midwestern world it's not uh, it doesn't happen a ton and I think um there's power in storytelling and I one day was like I love storytelling I love fat people like let's marry the two and so this spring um at Hook and Ladder Theater there will be a fat storytelling event um where you know, we'll have 10 storytellers who identify as fat um, tell their story. And the theme of this first event is joy in a fat body. But if someone's like, I want to tell a story about a great date that I had, you know, or like a story about this like awesome dress that I bought. Like, yes, please tell me more, because I think it's it's important. Like fat people exist we are here and we are living and we have lives just like everyone else. And so my dream is to make it a series and we like talk about all these wonderful things. But Joy in a Fat Body was really important um, to, to start that. And, you know, when, I, when you mentioned the social determinants of health and how kind of like physical space is a part of that, this with this storytelling event, it was really important to me that we find a place that fat people can just physically move around and mm -hmm. have chairs that support them. Um, I think you can talk to any fat person who likes to go to the theater. They're like, oh, the chairs are the worst. They dig into my hips. And it's like, I don't want that to be a concern when people walk into the space. I don't want them to have to like shrink themselves. There's got to be like a thousand different details. Yes. Yeah, so for make days. <laughs> It's still one of the details. So, like, if someone was interested in creating community, whether it be around fat people or whether, it's like, whatever identity, what would you suggest that someone does? I love this question. And I want to preface with, like, I am by no means, like, an, an expert on community building. Honestly, I think just asking people. I had a friend the other day say like you just like go up to people and ask them if they want to hang out I'm like well yeah how else are you gonna do it as a, as adults like it's really hard to to find friends and find community and I think giving people a chance and just saying like hey would you be interested in like hanging out and joining this but I I don't know it sounds really uh simple but I don't know just asking people if they want to be involved I think we all we all want that at the end of the day. So the last question that I have for you is, if you were to recognize someone, who would that be? What toast would you give? I would like to give a toast to my therapist. I'm a big advocate for therapy. My therapist, I've seen her for, gosh, like six years now, maybe more. Not only having her support, um, which has been wonderful, but just like knowing that she's a fat person living in the world and thriving and like 
seeing the support that she gives to others, it's inspiring and it motivates me to do the same. Like what she has given me, I hope one day I can give to someone else. For building community, for doing your own work so that you can support other people, for giving of yourself, not only physically, your time, your resources, your mental energy, this toast is for you. Thank you for making other people healthier through your giving of community. Now it's time for your toast. My toast goes out to Joe Campbell. Uh, when I moved into the neighborhood, she came to my door um, and introduced me around town, got me involved in some local community groups. Um, and that was, boy, a couple years ago now. And I have a great group of friends, a great community, and I'm not sure um, how it would have all come to place without Joe being there. So shout out to Joe Campbell. Now it's your turn. Record your own toast for future consideration at ketoasts.com. Thanks for joining us. And if you haven't already, please like, follow, and share this podcast to keep it going. Then go toast up some bread. Every positive action is worth toasting. Anyone who comes to Elizabeth's house, if you're listening, like this woman knows how to make good food. Is this America's Test Kitchen? Just bless it. Real cozy like. Thank you for being flexible. I will not be sitting this close to you all the time. Just when I have something to say, I promise. Like, I don't mind staring into your eyes. I'm really proud of you.